Okay, this is the beginner tutorial. It's just an introductory game I'm playing. Just pushing through the center here. Okay. Could develop. Yeah, just develop nice and steadily. Starting a new season, new account. Starting right from the beginning. Let's take simple, straightforward, small piece attacking a higher piece as well. Ooh, he's gone back with his knight. That's got to be. We've got to make the make them pay the price for that. If we can develop our bishop and get castled. So they may have lost a bit of a tempo or tempi or a movement in time as we would like to say. So it's fairly crucial to win development moves. Ah, okay, so the knights come out but is we could actually attack the pawn in the front of the king because there's nothing there defending at the moment. He could always bring his knight out to the side protecting. If he does, maybe we just take the knight off the board with the bishop. And it's come with the pawn, so it looks like we can get the rook off the board. We'll be forking the queen and the rook. Queen's going to move, maybe. Got sight, so we can get a check with our queen as well on their king. And maybe suffocate them a bit. Queen's moved, attacking the pawn. If we take the rook, Queen's probably going to take the pawn. No, they haven't. Okay, so they blocked their king in, so we can bring the queen here, put a check on and then bring the knight across because the king's only got one space to move <coughs> and it looks like there's a checkmate pattern going on here quite nicely bring the knight across bring the knight in front of the queen and then our queen goes in and gets the checkmate there's no other piece that can block that so that's teamwork pieces working together knight coming across putting a check on king has only one place to go the knight could come and defend i suppose could come in front of the queen queen takes and then the king moves down one but i don't think it'll make much difference the queen will be able to go in for checkmate okay okay quick analysis of that game so <coughs> As beginners, um, if you're wanting to improve in your games, analysis of the games and taking appropriate action on those um, analysis um, is a key thing. So it's okay looking at it and going, right, okay, yes, fine, fine, fine. But if you don't do anything about it, then nothing's going to change if you're looking to improve. So we push through the center, keeping it nice and simple, straightforward, and we support the pawn because the knight is attacking so we're defending so they to, they start attacking through the center and maybe potentially losing a little bit of tempi in terms of the fact that we can actually take this pawn here um, for free in a sense so we capture and we've got a smaller piece actually attacking a higher piece as well and uh, looks like the gauge bars agreeing with us on this occasion it's very rare that the gauge bar agrees with us so um, we're okay with that so they actually took the knight back so again that loss in tempo taking the knight back really does like cost in the long run if the opponent knows how to continue their attacks so we developed the bishop now we're looking to fashion maybe a potential attack towards this area here 
and they bring their knight down so at this point in time because they don't have any further pieces developed it seems fairly feasible to attack this pawn because we do have the bishop and the knight that would be attacking it so we bring the knight through but then they attack and as I mentioned in the game basically he could have brought his knight here to defend the pawn so we would have had to work a lot harder to put more pressure on that area maybe bringing the queen out here but then that gives them time to bring their own queen here so he's got three pieces defending that area so little things like that um, help with the development and defense of your area sometimes it can look a bit overrowing if somebody's constantly attacking you but if you sit back and have a look there are certain moves that you can do to defend your position so they pushed the pawn so that gave us the opportunity to capture the king can't take back because obviously the bishop is protecting and the knight is attacking the queen and the rook with a four so the queen moves out of the way so we can capture the rook so again in this particular situation here with the knight moving across blocking his king's passageway then his king is going to struggle for position so what i'm not saying i'm going to choose the best move but i think something was mentioned in the game about moving this here I'm not saying that it would have made much difference but our queen was potentially looking to come here so then we don't we're not hitting it directly we still do have this position how does he deal with that if the knight came here then the queen would still be able to come and do that and the king doesn't have anywhere to go so in essence it looks like it's trapped in its own little bubble queen coming here where else could what could else could defend that area his king can't move so maybe from the knight taking the rook can something stop mm, not really maybe pushing the pawn here so if he pushed the pawn maybe giving space for the king on the other side so maybe the king can come here yeah so then potentially the queen is coming here but now he's got a little bit of an escape so we can take the queen off at least the king is safe for now problem with that is if the king moved there what would we do and where's the king going here okay so he's got safety then if we move it then the knight puts a check on the king it's not a proper full full on check because he can come down and attack us he's going to want to stay off the white squares so he comes down and now his queen almost is taken for free Ooh, almost because his knight can defend i don't think there's any other attacks we could put an attack here oh the bishop can but then we lose the knight so if we lost the knight he's back on a white square queen could come here with a check then he has to bounce back up again and then the bit dark square bishop comes and attacks interesting come there he can oh he can't take so he's going to be okay isn't he and then he gets blocked with the queen interesting right okay so in any event that is a lot better for them by actually finding the initial moves that can help save you yes you may have made a mistake but find what potentially is the opponent going to do to me and what can i try and do to prevent that from ha actually happening rather than blocking my king which is what actually happened in the game and then basically it's a false checkmate okay this is the beginner's tutorial for chess so as we know we develop our pieces supporting the pieces keeping it simple this is a 10 minute game with zero increment ordinarily we bring the bishop here now because it's uh, stopping this knight from jumping here 
I don't know what they call that fried liver attack or whatever so going to develop the knight attacking the pawn but looking to make space for castling so it looks like they're potentially going for the knight and the bishop for a rook situation okay so we grab here so in essence they've lost two pieces for one piece so maybe they've worked this um, system through and they're going to basically look at trying to squish our king so what's the key thing here key thing is king safety we could move the king out of the way because his queen is wanting to come here so they'll be wanting to get rid of our knight at some stage which would mean the bishop coming here to attack so we could just bring the pawn here first to stop the bishop and we could push through the center because we do have a pawn and a, a knight and a queen supporting so they do capture capture and then capture back with the queen it's not actually doing that so he's made space by actually sacrificing in a way so we can bring the knight here now we're back again because the knight was due to be taken so they've lost another piece due to their seeking attacks on our king so he's blocked our knight from jumping to this key square we could attack the queen uh, the queen queen's probably looking to come here because if we move our king down then it comes for the cheapy here okay so these are things to think about but we want to develop the bishop so let's see what they do anyway we'll bring the bishop through and attack the higher piece so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece usually can't be wrong so the queen has come down into the firing line of the bishop and the opponents resigned okay so that was um, the first game in the beginners tutorial for this year so shall we take a look at the analysis on that one so here's the analysis and um, just take it through I think we broke it down um, okay during the game but just have a quick look see what the computers thinking as well so we developed the knight through supporting the pawn and then the bishop is eyeing up the pawn here so we bring the bishop through to prevent the knight from jumping to this square so then we develop and then they're risking it for a biscuit and they're actually attacking the pawn and they actually go for it so we grab and grab so as you can see the evaluation is showing that where we should be okay here but you have to play it correctly because I have seen these games um, being lost because the king is then left open and the opponents not worked well with their pieces so just because they're up the exchange does not mean that they've won the game so that's a key thing to remember we have more pieces on the board now so it's got a question mark on this pawn move here we did the pawn move to stop the um, bishop from coming here evaluation still okay for us and we push through the center so again blunder uh, we usually get quite a lot of blunder marks in here but we we have our own rationale for each of these um, maneuvers is saying move the king here we were considering moving the king back you know to take it out of the line of fire of the queen but felt that taking this moment here to sort of like give the opponent something else to think about also opens up the white square bishop as well so the knight captures so we can capture back and at this stage here that's like a big blunder and it's saying basically it should have put the check on the king yeah so to win that tempo so we can bring the knight back now so at this stage here it's showing us as out and out winning basically just from the position on the board that we've got so they bring this down which is um, blocking off the knight you know which is a nice touch because we were looking to attack the queen from that position so we decided to attack the queen again and it's saying yeah we should have moved the king again yeah that that is the option to actually do that and 
If played correctly, I suppose we would pay the price for not moving our king. And obviously this was a little bit of a blunder. Can't really say that that was a mouse click either because where else is the queen going to go? Was it going here or was it going here? So it's going to get taken either way. So at that point the opponent resigns. So it's really keeping things as simple as, as possible and going for obvious looking attacks or simple quick and dirty attacks with the knights and the bishops it usually doesn't board well it can work um, I have seen it work if the opponent makes the wrong move if I made the wrong move then they would have been able to capitalize on it probably they needed to just sit back a little bit I think I'm not too sure um, let's see so it, they went there what did we do captured they captured and then we captured back okay so then they opened up so at this, at this point if I was playing as white let me see oh I can't do that hold on let me kind of flip the board yes yeah, so if I'm playing as white and I've do, I've done the risk and you know I've done the knight for a bishop knight and bishop for a rook situation um, probably brick wool is, is it my go it's my go isn't it well it's wise go am I missing something oh it's already moved yeah so it's moved the pawn okay so we've blocked up here well we've blocked there so we can't go and do that move now I probably would have just moved the bishop here still and as white probably then not much going at this moment in time that's when potentially the king would go and defend itself slow development bringing the knight out not rushing anything you know because you've got the two rooks but the two rooks aren't working together at the moment so the advantage of the rooks isn't actually taking place yet so for me it is a matter of just taking time and just really just nurturing the fact that you do have the two rooks maybe doing whose go is it now have keep missing the turns okay so there so what would happen open up the white square bishop nice and simple maybe open this a little bit you know for the queen really just taking time just to pace it out then i'd be targeting this pawn here but it's not my go yet so bishop would be wanting to just get into line and then start getting all huffy on this side here towards the king you know i mean the gauge bar is just still on black side at the minute but you've got to for me if i was playing as white i'd want to get the advantage that i've got which is the two rooks into the game as quickly as possible i mean they can take but i don't think that i would take so knights got coming here bishops there bishop blah, 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 blah. bishop could put a check on the queen probably do a little cheapy like this let's go there so the queen has to move so we could move the queen and attack this pawn so the queen can come now and attack the pawn here so we have to do something to think about how oops got a check on as well so you actually win the pawn yeah can't bring the bishop back because the queen will take the bishop yeah as you can see <laughs> so the king has to move so then you win a pawn but then you'll probably lose the pawn again because if you take then the rook takes it and basically they'll be facing there so you're not going to rush that situation but you're slowly improving your situation in the evaluation so the king's moved could touch onto the bishop here a little bit see how i'm doing the slow development uh, it doesn't like that development but anyway um i wouldn't be taking probably go all the way back but not to there i'll have to come back here so you've made me do a reversal could consider taking this pawn now but we're working our pieces together what's the bishop's got this here knight's there at the minute queen's got this space here if you really wanted to be risky you could come and put the queen here but it'd probably get a little bit trapped up with the white square bishop and the queen but it's a lot better 
that type of development going forward is a, is a lot better. I mean, I don't know, taking the pawn, getting rid of that. Knight takes back, I suppose. Okay. So you, you're developing. You see the gauge bar, it's working for you. That You have to do that type of thing slowly. If you're going to do the knight, bishop for a rook situation. Look at my king. It's all home alone at the minute. So taking those advantages a bit at a time knights on this pawn here what would we do would we push this pawn on yeah push the pawn onto the knight where does the knight go does it get a fork let's see what happens um our knight's protecting this pawn so you could push onto the knight knight's not going to go here because he'll get taken it's not going to go there it's gets get taken so it looks like he has to go all the way back to where we came from so you're making inroads into developing your pieces as you're going forward and as you can see the gauge bar seems to be on our side in this slow development of um, pieces and then as you can see we've linked up the rooks and we could potentially start looking to maybe own this file with the rooks using the power base of what we've got the advantage so that's how you would do that sort of thing so that's this is the beginner tutorial uh, for 2022 and um, we'll be doing a few more just to basically educate ourselves on potential movements within the games there'll be wins there'll be losses there'll be draws but the whole idea is to about to entertain ourselves to keep us interested in developing in chess see you soon now looking at the intermediate level guide for intermediate level chess players and just develop the knight through and shall we just develop our bishop and look to castle So it's a 10 minute game, so we do have a bit of time to play with. It's no increment. Okay, so we're attacking through the center. I'm going to take the pawn. And I'm actually going to attack the queen for a brief moment. Surprised they've left it there. I'm actually going to take the knight then. Then attack the bishop. So simple techniques for simple results. Could move the knight. Just get that bishop out of the way. I think we'll do that. They're probably thinking now, let's get fancy, attacking the knight. <laughs> exactly what I just said. Oh dear. I'm actually going to bring the knight across here now. So the reason why I'm laughing and saying getting fancy is the fact that going simple and taking the bishop um, would win them a better tempo, but hey. So now our knight's in an, um, a lot better position in the center of the board. So he's attacking this pawn here, but he's wanting us to push, so he's got a two on one with this pawn. Yep. So if we attack the queen, then the queen takes the pawn, we take, knight takes, so it's like a pawn up in a sense. So what we're going to do is just give the knight a little bit of a nudge to see where he really wants to go now. Does he sacrifice himself? So 
So now that I know the ilk of the player, they want to get all fancy and arty. I'm hoping that they trip themselves up and go too far with their particular moves. So arty, let's attack. So he's got a piece under attack already. Now he's got two pieces under attack. He's got the queen under attack and the knight. So one of them has to fall and it looks like the queen and they resigned. Okay, so let's have a look at the analysis on that one. Okay, so we blocked through the center, developed the knight, all simple stuff. And oh, need to make a correction. Um, I mentioned that it was for the intermediate level. This is still the beginner's level, the beginner's guide to chess. Okay, so just developed the bishop and castle, king safety. So the opponents are obviously really going for it. They're pushing the bishop out, attacking. No, no problems with that. So we open our bishop up and they push through the center. All pretty, pretty standard stuff. As you can see, the gauge bar is not quite liking that particular pawn move. And for me, it loses them a bit of tempo, but it's not too bad. It's not majorly, majorly bad. We can capture. We've got a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Knight captures. We don't have to capture back as we did. We are now attacking the queen. Gage bar saying, well, there was probably something better. Probably simply taking the knight. Okay. So we felt fairly confident. I wanted him basically to drop the pawn here. That's what I expected them to do. And then I was just going to bring the bishop back here. Right. So that would then open up a little bit of a hole towards his king area, especially if he goes in kingside castles. So it's like forward thinking in a sense. But they didn't actually do that. They brought their queen down. So in my head, I'm going, hmm, that's a bit fancy already. So you don't want to be too fancy in your games. Simple probably is best and probably opening up the pawn and actually attacking the bishop with the pawn probably would have been better, safer. So we grab the knight, so the queen takes. So now we can bring the bishop back looking to exchange off, and they do, so we can capture quite nicely. So now we're focused on this pawn, the pawn that could have been the saviour for them in a sense. So they castle, and now we can move the knight out of the way, okay, because we have a discovered check on the bishop. And this was where I think basically we talked it through. They could go all fancy and attempt to go here, but they do lose that valuable tempo. Now I think it's too late to push that pawn. I just want to see what the evaluation would have said if the pawn was pushed onto the bishop. It's probably going to go, no, I don't think he should have done that. Okay, so pawn pushing onto the bishop there. So yeah, it's shown it's, it's improving their evaluation, that pawn push simple smaller piece attacking a higher piece i would have been happy for it like i said i was going to bring my bishop back here but now he's got a little bit of a gap here which i was going to look at trying to develop later on but for now for white playing as you know playing in that position and uh, the stronger thing for me i think would have been the smaller piece attacking a higher piece little things to think about as beginners in chess as we play going through some people go, no, you don't move the F pawn or you don't move the, you know, um, but in certain circumstances, it is viable. You know, there's no rule in chess that says you can never, never, never move it. You know, that's ridiculous. You know, it's like you, you wouldn't do anything after doing a night off. You know, if you're doing full night off, you'd be like saying, no, this is set. This is the way that it's going to happen. And this is the way the opponent's going to react. That's not how chess works. You have to work with what is available on the board. Play the board. Yep. So that would have been a stronger move, personally. Simple is. But they didn't. So we went back and then the pawn captured here. And then we moved the knight. And then they went fancy again with the pawn. At this stage, it's too late. Even the gauge bars are green here. Um, it's too late to the party, that pawn move. So reiterating that, that should have probably been done earlier. Uh, so now the capture, capture. So it's still pretty even Stevens on the gauge bar. So this is probably where it's going to 
dip for ourselves I think but we'll see how it goes so now they did another arty move which is this knight move here ordinarily yeah you'd go rushing with the small pawn you know attacking which would be a, a weakness because either the knight takes the pawn or the queen takes the pawn whichever you know so that is a situation you want to avoid okay so we avoided that situation and we attacked the knight with a lesser piece a bit like how this pawn over here um, should have probably attacked the bishop earlier we're now attacking the higher piece with a lesser piece which is the pawn and then they get arty okay so again as beginners really try and avoid trying to be arty try and avoid the higher level players you know you watch the high level players play or you'll read books on like the Paul Morphy William Steinitz you know that type of stuff and you'll go right yeah that's what I'm gonna do if they're attacking me I'll attack them but there's occasions when you do that and it's about learning when those occasions are the correct um, times or else you're just gonna keep doing the same stuff all the time so we bring our knight through here now he's got two pieces that are under attack so he's got his queen which is the higher piece under attack and he's got his knight under attack so in essence he potentially needs to move his queen out of the way yep to actually let the knight go and treat it as a sacrifice in fact probably better here because then he can take the pawn back at least but they move the knight so again as beginners um we tend to tunnel vision ourselves on pieces that don't matter and don't look at the ramifications of our moves so probably make look two moves ahead if anything um just to say well okay if i move there what is going to actually happen and that's a big piece to lose which is your queen so then we took the queen and that's when the opponent resigned so hopefully that was um useful so that was um the beginner's guide to um chess part three was it as a beginner it's always good to know that playing longer games does really make for better play in the longer term it's a better understanding of um, peace play and planning strategy and just getting used to the methodology of the pieces really does help to really get a good grounding playing longer games if you don't have the patience for longer games you're really missing out on some fabulous pieces of work that can actually go on within the world of chess it isn't just about bullet blitz fast moves fancy tricks it's it's not about that let's just go here there's more to it than that there's a whole family of good technical um what's he doing here he's going for cheapy he's going for a cheapy but he's actually going to lose out in that because we're going to go here and where does his queen go we've got the bishops all lined up so is he just going to take the bishop and forget that he's got the queen so anyway yeah so you miss out or you you get all these fancy tactics a bit like what's just happened in this game here um quick and dirty moves just to you know get pieces off the ball but now he's lost the piece but he's coming for our knight so he's took his time there to really think figure out what he's going to do so we could take his bishop for free I don't know if he realizes this or not I'm going to go here and ah he does realize <laughs> ah he realized okay let's go here all right so he realized after the event so now is his position he's got my king in his sights obviously um, but he's not wanting to over egg it now now he's trying to sort of like backtrack and say well i don't really want to go too heavy on him now um it might be too late because positionally now i think we've got a stranglehold on the situation no major attacks coming to our king now we're going to focus on 
blitzing out this area here it's obviously coming for this pawn but really and truly is that going to carry much weight we're making space now to start sorry blitzing out this area like we said up here so queen's going to disappear because his team's not working together which is quite nice for us yeah so you miss out on the really good stuff i'm playing a five minute game at the minute um, just to narrate about really playing longer games um, as part of your um, developmental um, process if you're really wanting to improve in chess longer games are where it's at um, if you're wanting to do shorter games then I would do those after you've understood the true ramifications of long play games like I said I'm still trying to come for these areas here I'm, I'm sticking with the plan he's going to be wanting to get his rooks out into the game yep as we said so I'm going to bring my rook here just to um, placate that I was going to come here but let him think about that pawn for a second want to focus here how can we get there got the queen facing doesn't look like anything major we may be talking yeah but how do you get there once you've got your pieces in a, a, an ideal position it all starts to fall into place but if you don't have your pieces in the correct position then you you're not targeting anything so he's looking to double up his rooks it looks like here and going to start developing the knight because we're targeting this area here that's our focal point and we are going to take takes with the queen take take and take the rook okay right so now his back rank is let's attack this pawn like we were going to okay and get the king up so position on the board is key this is key now because it's getting towards the end game they're on two minutes where we're on oh he's let that go he's let the bishop go that might be an interesting situation for us let's just bring it here and he's also got his um knight pinned to his rook so i think the pawn's going to have to drop so that um his rook is not feeling the sting oh dear okay we'll go with the attacking the knight now and he's saving it because he's actually got the knight there so we can Ooh, don't want to lose the pawn let's go here so he's going crazy now he's on one minute well one minute 58 we're on two minutes 50 so let's see what we can jostle he's coming for the pawn might as well protect that pawn nice and simple if we push this pawn what happens he gets a fork on our bishop so we have to be careful of that so maybe move the bishop first and attack the knight it's looking a bit too cozy up there isn't it and uh, what has he got mm -hmm. coming around let's go around the back got poor majority on this side so we probably need to push but then he's got this pawn we've only got one pawn that's a passer he's going for it big style uh, let's go here so that he drops the pawn he doesn't drop the pawn damn okay right let's push then <laughs> oh maybe I should have done that one it's okay he's on 1 minute 15 he's got to get his plot pawn cluster down he really wants to move his knight but I think all he, all he needs to do is push this pawn here doesn't he takes takes and then he's ramping home a little bit or maybe he's bringing his king down to support them might be too slow though because this pawn so he's going to babysit this pawn with his king it's a lot of work he's on 48 seconds okay so he is babysitting the pawn okay let's go let's 
coming down for our bishop probably but if he does we keep pushing and pushing so then his knight is thinking he's actually going to get the pawn maybe i don't know don't know if that works for them or not could come here this knight comes down let's go here we're on one minute 49 they're on 38 seconds and if we go there he gets the bishop so i'm gonna go here he's really attacking oh he's going for the pawn isn't he okay let's go here 36 seconds left they've got could take his pawn drops he's got three pawns on us then uh, or we could attack the knight but then if we attack the knight his knight then comes here puts a check on our king okay let's do that 33 seconds has it got increment this oh no okay let's go here does he get the bishop has he got a fork no he hasn't got a fork let's go here so he's given up all these pawns whoa he's given up all these pawns take there 23 seconds and just sit the bishop here so he's going this side isn't he for his poor majority he got the fork on me yet? I bet he has. No, not yet. 16 seconds. I think they're running out of time here. He's going to take the pawn, isn't he? Yeah, he's taking the pawn with the knight. Yeah. Let's go here. 11 seconds. Six seconds. Four seconds they're on just stay out of the way two one and zero oh he thinks he's going super fast that's not happening take that and we get a win on time so position play is key that was quite exciting um, it was really just a narrative um, version for the beginner's guide this one but we got into the game so yeah basically looking at your position play do long play games really first you're talking like minimum of 15 15 minutes 10 seconds increment games and then upwards you know 45 minutes 10 seconds you know that type of thing or even longer hour long games to really look at all the things that your pieces can actually do and where they can be placed what strategies you can use once you get a good understanding of that um, it's not about I'm not saying go do tactics or learn anything like that go and learn your own game your own understanding of how the pieces can move for you and develop your own your own chess 